Mm -hmm. So let's see if I can continue uh, yesterday's quest. Yeah, I wasn't in the side quest. I think I'll continue this. Then I'll I'll go home. I'll go on my way to Sumeru City. Okay, let's continue. <coughs> uh, let's go, we can fall behind. Yeah, we're supposed to follow the kids. Oh, here you go, there's a... Uh... Legoff. Uh, thank you, my friend. Thank you. To... Hey, hang on. My frames are dropping. Why are my frames dropping so much? Okay, this seems to stop. To have met such a friendly traveler in another lane, truly, I feel like a man encountering an oasis amidst endless deserts. Even my cargo has been sheltered beneath your great protection. And uh, here I was, sure that they were lost. Lots lost for sure at the hands of these hill troops. Uh, well, my audio seems to be a bit low as well. Uh, again? Seriously? Come on, I never met this guy. Yes, yes, these fellows are a nightmare. Yeah, are to me a nightmare inescapable. As you have seen, I am traveling merchant from Fontaine. Uh, all my goods are the latest and the greatest. But <coughs> that is precisely why these lots always target me when I'm transporting goods. Previously, they even hid at the mouth of of the main road, successfully stealing a batch of the latest apparel from Fontaine. And you know what? I saw with my very own eyes the mushroom caravan in front of me pass them by, safe and sound, right in front of their noses even. Do these hill do these churros just have it in for me or something? I mean I'm all the way here in Somero now, you know? And when I have finally gotten far enough away to look back at the scene of the prime, they had put all the clothes in a pile, looking to make a fire with in which to barbecue some meat. Oh dear, those burnt clothes could have sold far enough to buy lots of grilled meat, even Paimon thinks that was a huge waste. To be honest, I cannot understand why this fellow Keep chasing me as well, but thanks to you, I was able to protect my cargo this time. Here's a token of appreciation, please accept my friend, you deserve it. There was way too much talk for... Thanks, here's a reward. Uh, here goes this one. Close. Uh, uh. Uh, I think it'll be up there. Uh, I'll explore things Follow the wind. I think full world exploration I'm not gonna do live. Because I usually take quite slow. Just like a couple chests a day. So it would be kind of boring here. Yeah.
Got to run you on the bridge by falling in the water. Random Rasmus Pistols, welcome. These kids run faster than birds could fly. No, they are quite slow. Uh, you guys are getting good at running. It, it's going to worry me sick if you run away someday. We won't run if Rand is here. I'm going to marry Rand when I grow up. Wait, did you promise to marry me? Liar. Uh, we'll start this out later. You'll meet more people when you grow up. People are more impressive and better than me. For instance, Mr. Blount here is way mightier than me and has met many great people along their journey from far away, right? Did I have... well, not exactly... such a spy model, what did I have? Have you been traveling a long time? I'm gonna say you tell the stories. Sure, I guess. You got the time, you're scared, then. Uh, I have a meeting to go to. You kids be good to him and stay put till I come back. Okay? Alright, on to the stories. You're Yotan, right? What story would you like to hear? Stories about dragons. I thought said they are ancient and very powerful. Sea monsters. I heard there's a lot of big monsters in the sea. What stories about a distinguished lady who is smart and powerful? Uh, this girl... Uh, I want to be like Rana when I grow up, so I want to hear stories like that. They are all want different stories. Uh, isn't there someone that knows stories of the eight-headed Hydra silver-haired Banshees and the wicked Abyss Dragon? I don't think everyone would be happy if that person was here. Do we know? What? How about this? We know a lot, a lot of stories. And we'll tell them all. We can ask them about the mysterious creatures while at it. We can ask them about how they went missing while at it. True. Uh, wasn't that with a thinking? My mom heard me thinking. True, and about the mysterious creatures too. As a trainee, Yotan comes in Sudabe, you'll tell us what you want to know. Sure. I want to tell the kids story in a way that they'll find fun. <coughs> on Dragon Star, so I found me that exists in the world, and he said, well, we've only met one so far. Uh, yeah, there should have been more dragons. Uh, he said, a huge evil dragon lives in a place called Bonstadt. Uh, I for sure has his ears on the ground. Yeah, we know about that. So, what is the dragon like? Alfonso said it is terrifying in pillage small stat. Uh, how should I put it? This is a tale of friends resolving their misunderstanding. This is a tale of heroes triumphing over evil. Uh, it was more like the first one. Uh, here it goes. A long, long time ago, in a kingdom far away, a big dragon with huge wings and sharp fangs laid in deep slumber. When the dragon woke up, it saw the world had changed. Grow, the dragon announced. I'm mad now, and I'm going to wreck your little houses and keeps. The dragon wasn't actually bad, but, it but was tricked by an evil sorcerer into thinking everyone was bad. Then one day, two travelers arrived. Pavel tells the story of the azure blue dragon in a way that really engages the kids. So with everyone's help, the travelers removed the curse from the dragon and helped it find its friends. Wow, I... I had thought dragons were terrible and would eat subter beasts and people. I don't know what those beasts are yet. How big is the dragon, though? 
big like a house, big enough to swallow five of you bite. Big enough to swallow you. Yeah, this is too little. Well, no, this is too little. This is too much. Female around village will bite. Come on. Wow, if that's true, we can fly around inside a dragon's belly. When it gets hot, I'll go to Chesnaya with that Alfonso talking about, where it snows. When it's rainy season, we'll go to Valuka, where Granny Shiet is from. Valuka. Oh, that's the desert. Anyway, when I grow up, I want to travel everywhere like you. That's right, travel with my friends, just like how we travel and got to know you. Can we ask a few questions, Yota? It's about Mr. Squeeze and Josh. One of told us uh, they could be Aranara. Have you heard anything about them, Yota? About that? No, I heard nothing about Aranara. They look like cabbages. On second thought, yeah, they do. Uh, so you've seen Aranara before? Actually, I heard about them in Granny Jehet's stories. Can we ask Granny Jehet? No. Why? Alright, we'll drop it. Rana and the others are very worried about your kids, you ought to know. Have you gotten lost in the woods recently? No, I know the woods very well. There's no way I can get lost. But Sudabe and Kavos did. Everyone was worried, but not me, because I know Arana would take them home. Arana? Who's that? I mean, Rana. Rana will find them and take them home. That's suspicious. The Bible doesn't think we can find out more. Let's change the topic. Why are you interested in Dragon Stories? Uh, I want to be great like a dragon, then I can help Rana and Alfonso. They work very hard. It always takes a long time for Rana to patrol the woods. Alfonso goes out there when no one's looking too. I, I can help them as soon as I grow up, so they can spend more time in the village. I will get it. You're a great kid, Yota. Okay, this is kind of boring. So dragons don't eat people or certain beasts. I have to let off also know next time. <coughs> sea monsters. I heard there's a lot of big and peculiar monsters in the sea. Like the fish that's as large as an island. Or the squid as long as a river. And the story about the puppets and the whale. Also the turtle carrying an elephant on its back. <laughs> Uh, you've heard a lot of stories. Why the interesting sea monsters? When I grew up, I wanted to be a sailor, going on seven voyages and discovering uncharted islands and lanes. That's why I want to learn about sea monsters. This way, I can defeat them one day. We went across some pirates before. We went across the grants of some pirates. Come on, he, he had nothing to do with the sea. Oh, that's so cool. Did they find any treasure? Any tales of a treasure? Not sure, but Paimon does have a sea monster story. Uh, once upon a time, there was a sea serpent with many heads living in the ocean. It was taller than a mountain when it stretched out its neck. The serpent didn't behave, so I got trapped it on the seafloor under rocks to prevent it from making waves and destroying the harbor. After a long time, a long while, the serpent woke up and griped, curse you, this pickable god. I'll wash all your houses and treasures out to the sea and make them mine. War. Then it rose up to higher than the mountains and caused a tidal wave. I want to the story of the people in the flying castle fighting the sea hydra together in a way that really engaged the kids. And that's how... And that was how everybody worked together to defeat the serpent and protect the city. So the serpent has been defeated. What a shame. I wanted to beat it myself when I grew up. You face other monsters when you grow up. What kind of monsters? Let's talk about something else. I promise to tell you what I know after I heard the story. So what I would like to know about the mystery creatures in the woods. Oh, there's a lot of them in the forest. Like the legendary Stumper Beast Lord. Uh, it isn't like any ordinary stumpter beast, and will attack intruders. 
uh, and the wish Bolan Raja that snatches bad children away. But I'm old enough to know that Rana made that up to scare the kids. They all sound interesting, but we like to know about the round plane like fairies called Erdara. Do you know about them? Oh, Erdara. I've never heard of them, but I know about the Gator Raja. What Raja means? Because the second creature with that name. It's a very, very big gator in the woods that has lived for a for long, long time and is very, very cunning. There was this one time, that's an actual thing then. Uh, that didn't sound convincing. Uh, there am I. Just ask about something else. Oh, Paimon can believe there's a gator like that. Do you even. Uh, do you go into the woods after you canvas? Yeah, I used to, but not lately, since I got lost in there once. At least that's what the added said. That's what the added said. Because I don't remember anything, I went into the forest to see my friend and share stories about my sister. Then I just can't remember what happened. When I came to my senses, I was back in the village already. My father held me tightly while everyone was around me, asking me if I was hurt, hungry or thirsty. They wouldn't let me go there again. You should listen and I'll go there. You were to the forest to see your friend. Uh, you have a friend in the forest? Doesn't everyone live in the village? Yeah, a friend to everyone lives in the forest. Taught us many things like what, what fruits we shouldn't eat and which trees will let us climb all day. So there are trees that don't let uh, we climb. So what is that friend like? Well, I can't tell you. I'm sorry. I'll tell your friends. I made a pact with Sudabe and Yota. I uh, guess it's, it's a secret between the kids. I think we just hit at that age. Okay, we understand. Now be a good boy and don't play outside the village. Of course, I'll be a good big brother to Sudabe and Yota. The grow up to be a great sailor like Sindabakus. Uh, what story would like to hear, Sudabe? Any story will do, but I like to have a distinguished lady who is smart and powerful. And she doesn't have to be a distinguished lady, but the characters got to be determined and loving. Like Princess Cinnamon, who left her palace with a tiger in a fairy tale. That's a lot of debates. Well, Paimon knows several ladies who fit that description, but somehow they all have connections to Electro. They all have connections to Electro. Um, I think Ariaka would fall into that. Uh, Kokomi as well. Uh, Electro is good, it makes plants stronger and bear more fruit. You know a lot, Sudabe, so where should I start? In a place far away, there was a library, a general, and a shrine maiden. Ah, the general. Uh, and I think those will be more interesting. Yeah, making the shrine maiden a priestess and the general a queen should help to you understand it better. Are they both distinguished ladies? Yeah, they both are. Oh, so in this one I could choose... Uh, oh no, maybe the others would have some difference here as well, but... This could be a, about a different, different people. Once upon a time, in a kingdom far away, there was a very beautiful and powerful queen. But war came, and although the queen won, she also lost her friends. She cried and cried. I'm going to make a robot to have it work for me. Then I shall live alone in the palace forever and not make any more friends so I won't lose them. Beep, copy that, working now, replied the robot, who then began running the kingdom for the queen. Then some bad guys started to scheme. Uh, where does the priestess come in? Uh, uh, the queen had a 
pretty and powerful priestess friend who couldn't bear to see the queen go on this way. That was when a traveler came to the kingdom, he and his companion were both smart and brave. The priestess thought, uh, 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 they are agile and resilient, if they are willing to help. Oh, that's the start of the queen, the priestess, oh, who are distinguished ladies, in a way that really engages the kids. In the end, the lonely robot was still working hard, but that's another story. Everyone was so awesome, even though the traveler wasn't a distinguished lady, he, he was too strong. That's what I want to be when I grow up. I'm sure you can do it, but if you don't behave and get lost out there, then none of that will happen. First lie of you, Paimon. Yeah, so behave, it won't wander outside. What happened when you got lost before? I don't remember, I just went into the woods to get herbs. Herbs. Yep, Alfonso said there is a herb to improve Grandpa's eyesight. He has trouble seeing things lately, and he can't even see people coming his way. So I wanted to help Grandpa. Did Alfonso send you? No, he warned me not to wander into the forest too, but I wanted to help, so I sneaked off. And then I don't remember the rest. Nothing at all. Nothing. When I came round, I was already home. My brother said everyone was worried. I know what I did was wrong, it would never sneak off into the woods again. That's right, good girl. Speaking of the forest, about the mysterious creatures in the woods, I don't know anything about them. Well, that was fast. What do you mean, mysterious? <coughs> if I know what they are, they are not mysterious. If I don't, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Sorry. That actually makes a lot of sense, but what I want to ask about is round play like fairies. Round play, play like Oh, did that ring a bell, Superman? Uh, no, that sounds mysterious. Uh, that's a shame, because Rana said she would love to know what an Aradara is. Oh, she wants to know too, then... She does. Also, didn't the priestess in the stars say, uh, uh, uh. Don't be a tantrum throwing child to influence your toxic waters. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, uh, the priestess and the queen are really great friends. But like how they trust each other, I think Rana would understand why I can't say it. When I'm old enough to understand a lot more, I'll tell Rana and you too. But no, not now. Well, I hope you grow up healthy health. I'll be old by then. It's okay. I'll also age, so you'll always be more mature than me. Alright then. We won't ask uh, more questions. Just be a good girl and don't wander around. What do we be old? Because isn't his sister around for 500 years? Uh, thank you for the story. I love it very much. Uh, I'm going to be smart, pretty, and strong, just like the priestess. Then I'll marry Rana. Uh, it seems they know about the mysterious creatures, but just don't want to tell us. Should we divide and conquer them? Should we get added to see town to pressure them? Just treat it as a secret between these kids. I don't know. Uh, we're staying in Samara for a while. I will have time to look into it. I'm back. How did it go? Was it fun? It was fun. They told us a story. Dragons actually don't eat people, rather. Oh yeah, that's good to hear. I was worried a dragon might fly over here and eat you all someday. Oh no. Start telling is kind of fun. I bitch. Okay, you... We should go home now. It's about time to eat. Yosafat uh, say he caught good stuff in the water today. Come first, brother. Hey, both of you too. I got business to take you, but thanks for the invite. I want to meet you, brother. I'll be there next time. Come on, you've got to go now, or Yosafat is going to finish it all by himself. Okay, bye, brother. Bye, you too.
uh, stick around for a minute, Hilton. I want to talk to you. I'm uh, concerned about you. Uh, he is the only one that wasn't missing yet. The force hasn't been the same lately. The animals are getting aggressive and more fungi have popped out. Uh, same with the wintery zones, which keep appearing. No go picking mushrooms anymore, okay, Yotan? Don't worry, I know where it's safe and where it's not. And it's not safe. What's more, star shrooms are tasty and they give you the energy to keep working hard. No, Grady, uh, Jehiet, and I are both worried. Promise me they won't run away out there before I figure out what's going on. Okay. That's a good boy, Yotan. You'll be a great. You'll be great when you grow up. Alright, go eat with Cavs and others. Got it. I hope they all grow up safe and sound. What do you think about these kids? But was better, they're good kids. Yeah, I understand. Uh, regardless, I hope they will grow up safe and sound. My patrol is actually not done yet. I still got to check out the West. And, and I have a favor to ask. You know, Spymo, would you mind coming with me? Why? I spotted some wintering zones there with no one to check them. I'm very worried about kids wandering into one. You know, now that you are here, we will give you a hand with that. Please, so I have nothing to repay you with. I'll, I'll take the nice axe of your. She had an axe. I didn't pay attention, she wasn't wearing, using an axe. Piece of cake. I have nothing else to do anyway, I'll take the axe. He's only joking. We don't need payment, right? So, we will help? I really appreciate it. I don't know how I can make it up to you. Don't so much for me. Well, we're not going to ignore those in need. So, let's go then. Oh, I'll get up from here. They will straight. Uh, I couldn't read it. Time to go. Uh, the best thing about my house is that I can sneak out into out of it without anyone noticing. That's how I've been running off all the time since I was a kid. All right, back to business. Uh, you can just let's go whenever you're ready. Let's go. Sure, it's not far to the west. Who says there aren't benefits to a life of wandering? Uh, it's not far from here. Yeah, safely, it's easy on the main road. That looks like a main road. Here we are. When I was little, I would often take this road to go down to the river valley to play. The winter zones are appearing so quickly now. Entirely and the others are too busy to deal with them in the time. Uh, but it's a good thing we have you here now. Leave it to me. Okay, you made clean work of those winter zones before. But they're still dangerous. If it gets to be too much, be sure to leave the, the realm and take some rest. <coughs> winter zones can be dangerous if you catch too much. Okay. Strider. In shroud. Yeah. 
Gather. I hear everything. One with the forest. Can't move in. Wind strider. The clouds high. The birds come. God. Are you feeling? Do you feel weaker than you just know? It is all over there. I'll need to help clean up. Where is she? Uh, did she pass by me? Keep up. Keep up. There, I got one. The Scourge. Ah, that's the Scourge. Oh, it's just... Oh, no. Ah, those are the Gator Rajas. Enemies that dropped meat in other regions were there. There's not a lot of lotus, it goes all the way, the bow is hanging high in the sky. Oh, I couldn't read it all, but if it's only way the bow is high in the sky, does that mean I can only uh, farm them at night? Uh, bouncy mushrooms. This piece of bouncy mushrooms is a type of tree lakshana creature. Under normal success, you can jump on it to be bounced up high to higher heights. Its elasticity will be further increased after you have activated it using electro. Uh. These species of bouncy mushrooms have a type of tree lakshana. Is a type of uh, under normal success, you can jump. Same thing. Uh, the text was the same. I need those. <coughs> uh, but I could make it give it better. Uh, there's the shrooms. We have a patch of stars. So you basically turn to different states so you call your pile electro pile. This video is all dissipating. Regardless, I'll leave it to your capital haze like before. Just overdo it. I know, don't worry. Thanks. Where's the third one? One with the forest. Ah, time to pull oh. some weeds. Let's nip that in the butt. Stabilize. Stabilize. Huh. Wind strider.
Oh, there it is. Dust to oh. dust. Yeah, it's slowly face so far. Solidify. Confess. As one with wind and cloud. Over that way, Dex. Uh, get rid of the witch zones. You see, you get the activity has people, blah blah blah. Oh, she mentioned again. Let me see the shamanian. This one as well. Time to go. No, or maybe I just didn't pay attention. If I grab one more. First watchers are also tasked with protecting the ecosystem. Recently, potentially because of which results, allegations have come, shall we say, unusually maniac. Not only have they been invading other animals' territories, but they are reproducing at a faster rate. If this goes on, they will just be a danger to the children, but to the forest ecosystem as well. Luckily, your opponent isn't a wintery zone this time. It's my time to shine. You rest up. Well, uh, should be. Rest up, cheers. So come help you. Uh, welcome to help you. Uh, is it really okay? That's great then. I'll finally get to fight side by side with you. No, no, I'm gonna watch for a while. <coughs> oh, that axe. Oh, she does have a health bar. What happens if she dies? Let's just observe. This may take a while. She doesn't seem to be losing health. What's the point of her health bar if she doesn't lose it? Yeah, she'll probably win. It just take a long time. Look how much damage she took from them. In shroud. More? Wind Strider. Are there flee? to have a chance to do something, this should help with our problem a little. Besides, watching you fight made me realize that I still have a lot to learn, like footwork in time too. An experienced traveler like you is just absolutely amazing. Thanks, Pablo has me on strict training regimen. Oh well, we are always proving together as companions. Thanks so much, really. That reminds me, how's your condition? After taking care of so many winter results, you feel dizzy or daisy. No juice or anything. I think I can hit just let it uh, I think I'm dying. I think I'm dying. Uh, I see. Lie down quickly. I'll go get help. Don't make jokes like that. You worry, rather. Skitty, sorry about that. I actually feel completely fine. That's good. You've done so much. Goodness, I feel so much better now. Let's take a break. One of our forest patrol campsites isn't far from here. It should have equipment supplies. Uh, actually, I'm not that tired. Uh, 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 
Look at that guy. Okay, hey, that sounds fun. Okay, head off you go. It's just a hat. It doesn't matter what I chose anyway. So why give me an option that saves you? Decline the invitation. Time to go. Here we are. Uh, what's that round thing at the edge? I think it looks like a small cabin. No, that's, I'm not sure where it came from, but you see them all the time in Forest of Summer. Maybe it's some kind of ring? A strange thing to ask. I seem to have heard about this kind of house and its re residence. Who was it again? It wasn't the researcher who's a Satyavada life. Oh, never mind. You know, spy my way here for a second. I'm going to tidy up the campsite, get a fire going, and get some ingredients ready. I think will help you. I can't have that. I was the one who asked you to come and help clean the witness zones. Just think of us as training forest watchers. What do you need us to do, brother? Well, if you insist. Paimo, could you help me get some firewood then? All you need is some chop wood chopped, but that's nothing. You can see do that. Now we need to collect some some dry branches. Uh, I'm pretty great at chopping wood. You don't need to do that. You just need to pick some dry branches off the ground. Collecting firewood is one of the fundamentals of wild weather survival. Is that so? Okay, got it. Let's go. Uh, besides firewood, it has did I get it them already? That's sufficient supplies of everything else. Uh, I'm back. Have collected enough firewood? Not yet. It's fine. Leave to no. I uh, just stay here and rest up. Let me clean up here and I'll go right away. Uh, let me do this. You won't take long. I just want to tell you that I'm going now. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Uh, uh, would she tie those up? Uh, that's not. Time to go. Oh, here. We we'll have to pick up two branches. Heavy stuff. You have to pick the branches inside the fire. Well, sure, they be used to camping, probably do as much as they do. Yeah, that should be enough. Let's go find Rada. You guys are back, I'm almost over here as well. Will this be enough? Yep, that's more than enough. Alright, one of our camping traditions is to have both the same person in the group light the campfire. They just have to light it, right? 
leave it to us. Well, only the camp fire play the camp too. I the traveler can't light a fire. Uh, why the tradition? Probably because in the era of darkness, fire was a symbol of warmth and courage. In the era of darkness. Right, the origins of the Force Rangers we go way back. The earliest Rangers were the Force King's Royal Guards. I heard that they once walked in forests where there were real tigers. Later, Kyria fell, and thus began the era of darkness. Well, not many documentation, documentations have survived the cataclysm. So, no one really knows what happened exactly. Still, I want to see a real tiger. Uh, yeah, I think there's absolutely no way for the traveler to light a campfire. Let's finish this swift. Use the supply store in the campsite and to get there along the way. Rather makes a pot of rich fragrance curry. The rest of surfaces, the rest of blah 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 blah. Uh, it's so good. Taste, curry tastes even better after hard work. Sounds like running a stove pipe was like. Everyone doesn't care about such things. Still, this curry is so aromatic. What if they smell drown so? What's that shadow rotating there? Uh, I think there's something up here. Uh, what if they smell there are some creatures or hillshows over here? Curry, curry, in the air, hungry children, it's time to come home. This is a children's song from Sumero. There's something free about curry. Each family adds different ingredients and spices depending on how they make it. So each family's curry has its own flavor. So, when we were little, we could smell a curry and tell whether it was made by our parents. Uh, so, uh, every character in Sumeru could have a specialty curry that they could make. But once we got older, we couldn't tell whose curries was, was anymore, and they all seemed about the same. But still, you know that it's time to go home and eat when you smell curry. Curry, curry in the air, hungry children start to come home. The stuff you make also has a different aroma. Uh, is that so? I like to try. Sure, I guess. But we've just eaten so much of this curry, let's make something next time. Okay. Never mind, Spyro. Why do you have to pick up branches instead of chopping down trees when you want to start a fire? Does the Dangro Ark punish people who cut down trees? Oh, what do we do? Oh no, it's because fresh wood has too much moisture in it, so it's hard to light. Also, the Dangro Ark isn't that petty. Pity. Still. Our teachings in Sumeru also say to respect nature and the forest, because we are the forest subjects. So are the birds and beasts, and in the end, the forest will remember. If you grow up and forget, don't fret. The forest will remember. The forest will remember. Uh, Rana, what's wrong? Uh, I felt like something lost in the memories for a long time just occurred to me. Something warm and precious, but I couldn't remember at all. It all. Just those two lines. Dang it! It's like when you have to sneeze, but it just won't come. How infuriating! So things are harder to remember the more you try to remember them. Just ignore it, and after a while, it may suddenly come back to you when you're doing something else. I'll try. Thanks again for watching those kids in the village for me before. They are like little brothers and sisters. The eldest, oldest one is Kavos. He wants to travel the world by boats when he grows up. 
Sodabe is his little sister. She says she wants to be just like me. It's a little embarrassing. And he doesn't embarrass about that. Then there's Yotan. Are you more worried about him? He was raised by Granny Jehiet after being abandoned in the village. Uh, so Yota was... yes. <coughs> I was still just a little girl back then. One day, the other discovered that a turtle couple would be staying in the village were gone. All they left behind was this tiny, teeny tiny child. I always used to worry about him, but now he comes and the others are like a family. Alfonso also looks after him, just like a real older brother would. About what you and the children were talking about before. Yeah, now that I mentioned it, when we were telling stories to the children, we also asked around of the Aranara. Uh, that's the round play like little fairies I mentioned before. Uh, they said they didn't know, but they were actually like they were hiding something about the Aranara. Uh, I don't know much about these creatures myself, but I'll tell you the part of I heard. First of all, they are much like you described, round and plant-like. The forest is vast and deep here in Sumero, and it's constantly changing, like a gargantuan beast, so even locals will lose their way, let alone travelers. Uh, legend has it, that there are countless bizarre and amazing creatures in forests like this. And the most famous among them are the Erdar, which supposedly mean the forest people. The Erdar are related to the Daniel Archon and are the guardians of the forest. They are the bridge between people and trees. They also have the ability to enter dreams. But for the people of Sumero, dreams are very rare. That sounds amazing. Agreed? They might not say it in front of the adults, but I think they really like the legend of the Ardar. Who knows, maybe they've seen an Ardar while playing the forest. It's normal for children to have secrets about themselves that they keep from grown-ups. So long as they can grow up healthy, they become strong, kind and good adults. Also, about the kids going missing. How about that, huh? Do you have any clues? We were also really worried, so we asked around. The kids said that they were in the woods, and the next thing they knew they were in the Vimar village. They couldn't remember anything that had happened before that. That's right, Kevz and Sudab suddenly appeared in the village after going missing for a few days. Everyone was worried sick while they were gone. Alfonso even organized a search and rescue team. Hmm. What was it, Rana? Now that I think about it, it was actually kind of funny. Remember what I said about the curry before? Alfonso made a search party take curry into the forest with them so the children would smell it. Anyway, we didn't find Cavus or Sudabat. <coughs> but they came home on their own. And with the whole memory loss situation, something about this whole thing just doesn't feel right. So, I've been patrolling the forest and rolling out any elements that could harm the children. Yota is the only one left who has not missing, so I have to protect him. About Alfonso, oh, speaking of him, Alfonso seems like he's really popular in Vimara village. He organizes a search party and the kids talk about him all the time. Oh, he, he's like an older brother to them. They've treated him like family since he arrived in the village a few years ago. According to him, like Yota, he doesn't have a family, so he sees this place as his real home. Yota also sees him as his actual big brother. Pablo gets it. If you choose to stay in Virar village, I know they'd be very happy to have another big brother and big sister. Like I said before, if it's possible, I hope they can join the ranks of the Watchers, and we will patrol together. What do you think? Well, I am actually traveling to find someone. I briefly explain the reason of your travels to Rana. I see, I understand how you feel. I also had a friend who was very dear to me and vanished out of the world. But they, well, it's not important. The blue girl looking for, I feel like I've heard of, about her somewhere before. Let me think. Nobody ever heard about her, so 
Nope, I can't remember. I'm sure someone told me a story about blow girl, gl blow girl before. Just like gold. They call it Dara or something. Uh, Pebble feels like Riley's memory isn't too good. That's what happened when you grow up. <coughs> There's no need to force yourself, rather. Pebble hopes the kids in Hibara Village are doing okay. Well, I'm very happy that I can meet the two of you. I'm sure the children feel the same way. That's taking too long, come on. You're not only skilled, but also so kind. And I'm so moved that you would worry about my little brothers and sisters in Hibara Village. I'll keep an eye out for the person you're looking for. Then, when you finish your journey, come to Sumero. We can patrol the forest together. Now, let's put a pin in that for now. Okay, but th think about it. If only I could have met you in Paimon earlier, you are making Paimon blush. She, uh, she fell asleep. She can't even sleep while sitting upright. She must be exhausted. It looks like Rana doesn't have your, our stamina. Do you want to take a rest? Yeah, I'm gonna have a little bit. Uh, there's still something I need to know. I think that's the continuation of this quest. Sleep well. Slept so well, I don't even remember falling asleep. Sorry about that. Uh, you can sleep even while sitting upright. Uh, not really. I just ate a lot. I was feeling so relaxed that I just. Uh, here's a little forest watcher trivia for you. When you're searching for a missing person in the forest, you want to feed them something that's easy to digest when you find them. Digestion consumes stamina. That's why you feel sleepy easily after eating. Or at least that's what the academic researchers say. Uh, Eden Spyro, have you rested? You worked so hard yesterday. We slept like babies. Yeah, don't worry about us. Are you sure? Okay then, thank you so much for yesterday. I feel so much better now that you are here. Uh, you can go to Owings. Is there any work left to do today, brother? Let me see. I think we're just about done here. Let's head back to Vimara Village. We can check in on the situation on our way back. Okay, let's go. <coughs> I'm not even sure where am I in the map. Uh, I'm kind of close to that one. I think I'll go there. Just shoot. If I don't have to climb too much, I'll go there. I'll lead the way. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Go. Time to go. Oh, there are machines here. Ah, 
of the desert she is here already. Okay, now let's head back there. Maybe then I'll probably get that before going north. No, don't eat. Well, just hang on. Uh, oh. Is that another city? I think it's that up there. No, it's this over here. There may probably be uh, some quests here if it's a city. Time to go. Yeah, I'm not gonna talk to all these people now. Uh, is that a city? It doesn't really look like a city. There seems to be only one beauty. This guy looks the middle of the <laughs> I'm glad you both could come with me. Still, I'll need to report the expansion of the nearby winter zone to Tainari. Uh, is that a kid from Vimara Village? Hilton, wait, wait up. Person there, just watch it, blah blah blah. One with the forest, I'll uproot you. Clouds high, the birds come. This is order. Stabilize. Uh, I think I never let it down. I'm gonna go run you off. Can you hear me, Yata? Yata. Uh, who are you, people? Uh, don't get in your way. Uh, I should be asking you that question. I'm a first watcher here. And I'm in the middle of searching for a missing child. State your names. Is the Fatui where they came from? Uh, so these are the Fatui that Alfonso mentioned. State your business. Alfonso, whatever. I don't think you'll be getting out of here without a fight. <coughs> well, looks like we're not going to be able to talk this one out. Pay your dues. Careless. Solidify! Can't see? I hear everything! Fallen leaves adorn my knife! Wind strike! I don't can you see. Oh, I can't go outside. Uh thank goodness they were here. You fall well. Really? Probably because you're by one war by my side. I was like Alfonso was a kitty. These Fatui guys are dangerous. Anyway, we can talk more about that later. Yota must be somewhere deeper in the cave. We better keep moving. Can you hear me, Yota? Uh, Rada, is that you, Rada? Don't be scared. We are coming to get you right now. Crumble! Yeah, don't break that. Stabilize! Oh 
don't know. Why did you stop going? One man's stone is another man's gem. Oh, is there anything so? In a place like this? What happens? Oh, uh, brother, yes. uh, what are you doing in a winter zone? Uh, there are so many monsters. I'll take care of this. Uh, what's that green thing? No, there's no time. There, let's do it together. Yoto, wait here and don't move. We're coming to rescue you. Wind strider. Solidify. Is it extremely dangerous for her to be walking around here? Since she doesn't have a vision. Time to go. As one with wind and cloud. I'll approve you. There was still one thing there. Finally, brother. Well, Yota, it's okay, little man. It's nothing to cry about. Look, if uh, if I can tell them about what I felt in the Ridgeway Zone to those academia researchers, they will be able to take care of the winter for good. Uh, did you see me fight? No, did you see the fight? Be sure to thank him. Brother, uh, please, that's enough. I'll go get help. It's fine, I just feel a little dizzy, that's all. A little, little tired. Brother, I'm sorry. What are you talking about? You're my little tiger. Uh, no more crying. You're okay, aren't you? Does anything hurt, Yota? Do you feel dizzy, weak, or... I'm fine, brother, but... Brother, you, it's nothing, I'll be fine. I'm a battle-hardened horse watcher, after all. Let's go. Is that serious? You should die. Uh, don't worry about me. Now let me catch my breath. Time to go. Oh. I think I got Stabilize. Wind strider. Fallen leaves. Adorn my. I hear everything. Confess. I will have order. Hmm. This arena at all, I expect it should be a boss fight. Brings a smile to my face. Hmm. Huge face. And the lane. Time to go. 
But I'm pretty sure, I mean, it's kind of a unique place. It looks like every, I mean, unique. It's Time not to go. A, does it feel like a regular place for... For just a common chest. I think that would be more... Eventually, there'll be some flash or something there. <laughs> With a boss fight. Uh, I'm sorry, in the spam, I need to rest. Wait for me, Yotan. Are you really okay? We'll go get help. No, no, it's fine. I just need a little rest. I'm sorry, Rana. I'm sorry. Really, how many times do I have to say it? I'm fine, but I'm very angry. You promised me that you wouldn't go into the forge. Once I'm over up, I'll teach you a lesson about breaking promises, a little rascal. Uh, Alphonse said that the mushrooms here are huge, and I just wanted to bring you some fresh mushrooms to eat, to give you energy. Davi, you didn't need to do that. Just thinking of you guys gives me energy. Still, the mushrooms here really are huge. They definitely taste great in a curry. Did Alfonso let you come here? No, Alfonso also told me not to go running off. But I wanted to give Rana something tasty to eat, so I... Alfonso wouldn't do that. He's Yotan's big brother. Uh, Pablo understands, but Yotan, how did you get stuck in the wintery zone? When I was in the forest, I thought someone was following me. I got scared. I thought it was the Marana's avatar. Uh, so I just kept running. I, I ended up running into Marana. Huh? Marana's avatar. Uh, it does bad things in the world of for Marana. Uh, it's a bl big black thing, Marana. That's the victory. Oh. oh, yeah, the victory. Marana, what a strange name. Uh, how did, how did I know that Marana is the victory? Dang it, everything is spinning. Yota, what was that green thing just now? Uh, that was Ararakalari. It can protect people from the corrosion of the Marana. More, more things I, I don't get, understand. This is a kind of force magic. It's also a kind of music. It's an era. What is it? Don't worry about that right now. Rest up. What is it? Don't worry about that right now. You need to rest. It's on the tip of my tongue, but... I'm sorry, Rana. I'm sorry I never run off like that again. I'll be good and stay home. I know you become smart, healthy. And you'll know right from wrong. It's just like knowing which mushrooms can eat, which you can. I know, I know, I'm sorry. Now, know that Marana is bad and the force is good. Become a strong and good person to help people who need help. Just like in the Paimo. And don't forget, the force will remember. Now, this is bad. Paimo thinks Rana's condition is getting worse. Uh, I'll go get help. Uh, I'm fine, really. I just need to rest up for a while. Uh, please take Yotan back for me. Okay, let's go, Yotan. Don't move, Rana. We'll be right back. We shouldn't leave her. <laughs> Don't worry about me. You guys go ahead. Yeah, this is a horrible idea. Damn, this quest is taking way too long. Time to go. And it always hurt because she was getting attacked by a few mushrooms and I stopped along the road. And she could probably deal with them by herself. Hey, there's one here. Since I'm here. Hey, is that a crocodile nest? Time to 
Time to go. It's not a time. It's time to go. There are two of them. Uh, Yota, why are you in Sergeant? We so we make this quick. You quickly explain what happened. I see, Yota, you go rest up. Okay, I'm sorry, Alfonso. It's fine. What matters is that you're okay. Wait here a moment. I'll go with you as soon as I prepare some medicine. There's no time. This is the location. Head there as soon as you can. There's no time. It's better to take medicine to her than to bring her. Her here. You have to turn back to look after her mother. Uh, wait. <laughs> the pursuit takes you back to the cave. Uh, good, I don't have to walk there. I will hope run is okay. She's going to die. Uh, Paimon sure this was the place. Rather, can you hear Paimon? Mm, what are these traces? We have traces. We better follow them. Maybe there are clues left for us by Rather. There are traces. Time to go. Oh, okay, so maybe she's a dad. Well, looks like the thing that protected Yotan earlier. Hey, brother, can you hear Pyball? What's going on here? Could it be that our thing Yota and Irana are talking about? What was it called again? Aurora Kalari. Uh, yes, right. That was it. My own things, they said it could resist the Barada corrosion or something. Uh, yes, they're smart. Aurora Kalari can resist Barada. Wasn't I killing some things like that? Oh, is it this the thing we saw before? Uh, you scare Pymo. Pymo thought you were a talking vegetable. Not vegetable, Arana. Arana is strange. Aranara. Aranara. Uh, did you say Aranara? Now that Pymo was really looking at you, Pymo thinks we really have seen you before. Arana. Well, things we heard this name when Yota was telling this that story before. Yes, oh, they are corks. Uh, yes, Nora Yota is Arana's friend. Aranara are children of the forest. We live with trees. Not like you, there are Ignis. You are a child of Dandelion, always traveling. I don't know, Ignis name. How Arana knows? Not important, but Arana wants to help the Arana. Uh, this is very important. The Arana, uh, that's always a total twister. 
uh, you want to help your brother. Uh, what do you need us to do? Thank you, you good Nara. She's Arada's very important friend, so Arada will protect her. But that is not enough to heal Nara. Narada we beat Chan. Nara and Idus must go to Vanda Rada and ask everyone to help get Bicha. What's that? Narada got corroded by Marada. Very serious. Bad bugs are biting tree roots. Uh, uh, trees will wither, fruits will rot. Nara's life is like a tree. Bad bugs like Marada. Only Bicha can make Narada better. I I still don't know what I need to do. So we need to go somewhere called Vanarana and come up with a way to get this picture right? Then we can heal Rana. Uh-huh. The Rana's current condition. Don't worry, Arana will be here and fight Marana corrosion. So Rana will not get worse. But with no Bija, Rana will not get better either. Follow the first path, keep going towards where water comes from, then you reach Prada Murana. And sing, sing the hot trash water flowers. They were, it was very funny, a melody is rising up in my mind. This is the rhythm of the great dream, sing it to enter Vada Murana. Enter our dreams, our world. Uh. <laughs> but do we really have to see? What if it attracts a wopper flower? Well, I'll, I think using a musical instrument works too. Uh, that's worth a try. Let's return to Vibara village and see if Grandpa Amadaya has one. Chloe. Uh, Uh, come on. You know what? I think I'm gonna stop that and continue with the main start. Damn, many of those stories usually take just a little while, and this one keeps going, going, going. The next quest I find, I'm just marking on the map and continuing my way, and I'll come back later. Whoa! Whoa! That's cool. Damn, that's really cool. Does it show up on the map? Ah, <laughs> uh, here's part almost. Ah, uh, there's also uh, obviously a fishing rod for this region. Hey, there's a different area over here. No, not grabbing anything, I just want to take a look at this. <laughs> uh, hey, there's a thing down there. Let's check what this is, but if it's a Boss to fight or something. Oh, I can eat her through its arm. What's that? Oh. Oh, there are people here. Uh huh. Seal of the stone pillar. This unique sort of stone pillar seems to be the key of sealing certain room machines. 
use power to neutralize the energy within them, which will then release the machines from their seal. But you aren't usually supposed to be unsealing such monsters, are you? Oh, and it reminds some frost. Uh, these are giant warriors, may be found in the many scattered mercenary groups that hail from the desert. They will unleash the Omeo Spirit seal in their weapons after taking a certain amount of damage and enter an infused form. Uh, they may be noticed. That greatly boosts their combat capabilities. Once this infused form aids, they will enter a weakened state for a time once they, this infused form aids. Once this infused form aids, they will blah 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 once this infused form aids. Cluster leaves of cultivation. Ah, yeah, I read about those. Uh, you sometimes come across cluster leaves cultivation, some arrow, which will scatter four leaves sigils around them when they come into contact with dendro. Uh, use this object to make your adventures in some arrow easier. Uh, okay, but let's go back and continue our quest. Run is fine. She won't get better, but she won't get worse either. So, we can continue. She's safe. It feels like those things could be a bit closer one to another, so I could continuously use that. Uh, here go, can I, with the things I got, can I upgrade him already? Yes, I can. I haven't fought the boss yet, but I converted some hydro crystals I had into dendro crystals earlier today. Huh. Uh, no, I can't. Uh, I need to upgrade that. Uh, now I need to fight the, the boss. Can I get something here already? Not yet. Oh, here you go. Let me... I haven't done, made a wish today. Yeah, I got him yesterday. I didn't expect to get anything here. Do I have some? I have one. Yay. Almost completely useless. Time to go. See where all wisdom resides added to the archive. It doesn't really look like a city. I mean, it's a huge tree and stuff, but it doesn't look like the main city of the region. Why is this dog actually here? Sure. Hey, there are four dogs here. Oh, let's bring this guy into town. He didn't want to come. Uh, here you go. Uh. Keep up. <gasps> yeah, I guess I'll avoid talking to people. There's random NPCs around. Up. 
One moment, please, you two. It appears this is your first time visiting Sumeru City. Oh, yeah, that's right. But how did you know that? Because there's currently no information on either of you in the Akasha. But no need to worry, that won't prevent you from entering the city. In fact, the Academia conveniently provides each traveler to Sumeru City with a device. Uh, is this a magical device? Because it feels like something that should be for Fontaine. Perhaps you two have heard of the Akasha before. It's our beloved Greater Lord Rukadavata's lasting legacy. A treasure trove of collected knowledge. So they're basically a hype mind? After centuries of tireless research on the Akasha, the Academia created one of its most ingenious inventions, the Akasha Terminal. As long as you are within Sumaru's borders, you may use an Akasha terminal to connect directly to the Akasha and access any knowledge you need. I should mention that due to technical limitations, the operation of Akasha terminals will be much smoother and more effective in large cities such as Sumaru City and Port Ormos. Oh, so this is the thing that Tainari was telling us about. It sounds pretty amazing. Yeah, it's the internet. You two are quite fortunate. Until recently, it was standard practice to only issue Akasha terminals to outlanders who spent an extended amount of time in Sumeru. However, this policy was recently changed, and now all travelers are issued one upon arrival. For free? Here are your Akasha terminals. Please handle them with care. Okay. What an ugly, friendly dog. <laughs> it kind of looks like a leaf. Uh, not really. Kind of looks like a uh, arrow tip. To activate it, simply hold it in your hand and say the following phrase to yourself. <clears throat> May the mighty God bless us with their voice of wisdom. Yeah, I don't really like that. Oh, since this little doodad lets you access knowledge, maybe we can use it to find a way to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali. Let's give it a try. <clears throat> May the mighty God bless us with their voice of wisdom. Uh, did we get two? One for me, one for Paimon. May the blah 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 bless. Yeah, she got one too. <gasps> Whoa! Just now, something clicked, and Paimon suddenly knew how to use this thing. It seems all we need to do is concentrate on what we want to know, and bam! You get it. Oh, that'll come in real handy. That feels odd. It seems too advanced for this game. Exactly. That is the power of the Akasha. And with that, let me officially welcome you both to Sumeru City. May the wisdom of the Dendro Archon always be your guide. Okay, now that we're in, we can check the Akasha about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Let Paimon try. Hmm. <gasps> 500 years ago, the sages found a newly born deity from within some scorched ruins. The deity now resides in the sanctuary of Suristana. Hmm, seems pretty similar to what Kali was telling us. Okay, next, let's concentrate on asking how to meet her. Hmm. Uh, huh? Uh, Hyman doesn't sense anything. Um, hmm. The Akasha didn't respond to Paimon's question. The same happened to me. Oh, come on! Ugh. Focusing on this question feels like when you have something you're trying to remember and it's on the tip of your tongue, but you just can't think of it. Ugh. Paimon's brain is exhausted. Let's try asking the Akasha something else. Oh, smart idea. But what are you going to ask it? Uh. What are my options? I think, why does the Akasha answer my question? I think, uh, that. <coughs> and then that suddenly comes to mind. The Akasha doesn't unconditionally respond to every question. Also, even if the same query is requested by multiple people, the Akasha is still imparts knowledge based on each person's identity, age, experiences, and other demographics. Uh. Huh. Could it be because we're outlanders and we've only just arrived in Sumeru? You know, maybe we're not quite...
qualified to receive an answer to this sort of question or something. We shouldn't see our minds and know that we have a noble goal, is blah blah blah. The lesser not Kusanali. So knowledge begins to trickle into my mind for a moment, but there wasn't really anything I didn't already know. Greater knowledge, Ruka Devata. When bright dots of light appear in my mind, I probably need to calm my mind and focus more to understand what they mean. Feelings of affection, intimacy, nostalgia, sadness, and anxiety also come to my mind. This seems to be what the people somehow feel about their departed Arco. I mean, do they still feel that? It has been many years, not long, the people here. Have even known this article. Uh oh, Paimon's getting all teary-eyed all of a sudden. It feels like the people of Sumeru really miss their archon. <sighs> well, it seems no matter which way we try, we can't find anything that'll lead us to Lesser Lord Kusanali. Hmm. Guess our only choice now is to try meeting with the researcher that Tainari recommended. He's from Sumeru, and even has a position in the Academia. Maybe he'll be able to access more info from the Akasha. Let's see. Tainari wrote an address on the letter's envelope. Oh, it's not far from the city's gate. Let's head over and have a look. Hopefully he's at home. Watch out for pickpockets. Hello! Are you Rohawi? Uh, shouldn't we know with our augmented reality? Yes, that's me. Can I help you? Great! You see, Tainari sent us here and... What? Tainari? <coughs> uh, please, th there's no need to say anything, really. Sure, I admit that the article I published last month wasn't <laughs> my best work, and maybe the data didn't produce the most convincing results, but... Uh, I think we understand us. We're not here to discuss academics. Here, this is a letter from Tainari. Oh, let me see. Ah, ooh, what a relief! You two nearly scared the life out of me. So you two just have some questions for me? Seems even Tainari acknowledges my innate ability for procuring information. <laughs> so, what is it you two would like to know? With Lesser Lord Kusanali. Do you know a way we can do that? You mean you want to meet the Dendro Archon herself? Ah, uh, this isn't exactly my area of expertise, but let me see what I can find in the Akasha. Hmm. Sorry, the Akasha didn't respond to my query. What? You too? But what about your abilities for getting information and all that? Uh, Paimon was sure you'd be able to access more info than we did. Well, as I said, this isn't my area of expertise. I am but a lowly researcher, so the Akasha doesn't see a need for me to know more about the Dendro Archon. Uh. All I know is that ever since Lesser Lord Kusanali returned to Sumeru, she's never left the Sanctuary of Sorasthana or made a public appearance. Huh. Expect her to be such a mysterious figure. The Dendro Archon is somewhat of a recluse. Perhaps she just doesn't want to entertain visitors, which would explain the lack of information in the Akasha. Aw, but then what can we do? <laughs> no need to worry just yet. I'm only hypothesizing here. You could certainly try asking around and see if anyone else has ideas. And besides, you two should consider the bright side of things. Not being able to see Lesser Lord Kusanali may not be a bad thing. In this world, there will always be information you cannot obtain from the Akasha and things you can never accomplish. Knowing when to yield is a form of wisdom. Uh, okay, I started to not like this society. Take me, for example. It's a miracle if my brain cells can spit out one paper every three years. But Tainari? 
That guy can publish three papers in just a single year. Uh, okay. Thanks for your advice. Don't mention it. If you two ever want information about things like who's been promoted within the academia or relations between the six great sages, come find me. Hmm. So by air of expertise... Hey, come on! This is a survival skill at the academia. Oh, Paimon's expectations were pretty low, but this is so low it's like digging holes in the dirt. Uh, so what do we do now? Even if we want to talk to someone, we don't know anybody here. Uh, no, there's still one other person we know. Huh? Like who? And Asra obsessed. Oh, you're uh, right! Catherine! The Adventurers Guild has its own intel network! Let's hurry and find her! Yeah, they, they are in surprise that they expect to meet a Catherine here now. Anything else you'd like to ask about? about the six great Sage sages? is the highest rank for an academia researcher. Uh. Since the institution's founding, each of the six great sages represent the finest mind and leader of their respective darshan. One grand sage is chosen from among the six sages to serve as the head of the academia. The current one is Sage Azar of the Ratawahist darshan. Since ancient times, the sages have contributed immensely to Sumeru. The widespread usage of the Akasha is thanks to their hard work. Anything else you'd like to ask about? Uh, about the relationship between the sages? <laughs> I just knew you'd be curious about that. Although the six Darshans conduct research in different disciplines, their sages frequently interact with one another when managing academia affairs. In the Immorta, our leader is Sage Nafis. His temper is legendary. We researchers are terrified of him. And even the Grand Sage gives him some leeway. He hasn't shown his face lately, though. Rumor has it that he's currently involved with some major project. Thankfully, he's been so busy that I was able to publish a paper. Anything else you'd like to ask about? Goodbye. See ya. Take a page out of my book and learn to look on the bright side of things. Always look at the bright side of life. Uh, where is... <sighs> Can I just steal from here? Yeah. Oh, there's some instruments here. Abyssosk. Hello, Traveler and Paimon. Catherine, we need your help with something. Understood. The Adventurers Guild is always ready to serve you. With what do you require assistance? Oh, she has all the we want to meet with Lesser Lord Kusanali. Do you know a way we can do that? You two wish to meet with Sumeru's Archon. Understood. Please wait. Uh, she probably should know about our quest so far. Lodi? Lodi? I apologize, but I am unable to call up any relevant information in the Akasha. I'm also unable to locate any pertinent information in my personal memory. Uh, yeah, just now I... I mean, she's probably not Robin stuff, but is she like the one from the Shogun? Please, do not worry. I may know of someone who can help you two. In Sumeru, the Adventurous Guild does not serve as the vanguard of information. Rather, there are numerous active mercenary groups collectively known as the Aramites. They take on various contracts and work all across Sumeru, so they naturally accrue intelligence. An Aramite brigade called the Corps of Thirty is in charge of Sumeru City's defenses, 
Not only are they the oldest brigade, but they are responsible for managing and coordinating the affairs of all other mercenary brigades. Corps of Thirty? What a weird name. Supposedly, they are named as such because their ranks numbered 30 at their inception. Asfond, an advisor with the Corps of Thirty, maintains good relations with the Adventurer's Guild. Though he's already retired, he and his words carry great weight within mercenary circles. If you'd like to get in contact with him, you can find him at the Corps of Thirty's headquarters, the Citadel of Regzar. Thanks a bunch, Catherine. You're welcome. I wish you two the best of luck. We look forward to your exploits in Sumeru. Astra Abyss. Uh, Catherine, it's you again. Hello, it is me. Indeed, me, Catherine, the receptionist of the Adventure Guild. My job is to provide adventures, quests, and intelligence support. Since it looks like you are already familiar with the Adventure Guild's modes of already, I'll leave it at that. That's not what I was asking. Have you been following me this whole time? Uh, if all expenses are covered, I won't refuse. But unfortunately, being a receptionist is a year-round job, so I don't get vacation opportunities like that. Add uh, I wanted another place to get rocks. No, no, no. Ah, it's still here. The sight of shiny jewels always brightens my day. Keep up. Welcome. The Adventurer's Guild told me to expect you to. Oh, they're fast. It's nice to meet you, Asfond. We'd like to ask you about something. I see. So, Catherine's the one who sent you this way. Ha! <laughs> it's true that the Aramites' network is vast, but even I can't help you meet the Dendro Archon. Wait, seriously? That's it? <laughs> Afraid so. The Aramites aren't terribly religious, so we don't know much about divinities. As far as the Akasha goes, we can access even less than you. What? We originally came from the desert. The gods there died off long ago. Since those days, we've used our own two hands to carve out a living. We don't beg gods for their aid. It isn't just us, though. If you ask me, I think most in Sumeru aren't interested in lesser lord Kusanali. Well, don't we know where she lives? Can we go as the guard at the door at least? Oh? Why is that? Just take the Academia, for example. They're the ones who truly rule Sumeru. Although they believe in gods, most of them only care for the late, greater Lord Rugadavada. In their eyes, she was the one who founded Sumeru and gifted us with the Akasha. Lesser Lord Kusanali just happened to inherit her legacy. Because of the Academia's influence, most citizens are more familiar with greater Lord Rugadavada and hold her in greater esteem. Not to mention that Lesser Lord Kusanali never makes an appearance, and the Academia never announces anything about her. As far as the people of Sumeru are concerned, she's just a god that exists. And that's all. Really? Aww. After hearing all of that, Paimon sort of feels bad for Lesser Lord Kusanali. Ha! <laughs> but who knows? We're all just guessing when it comes down to it. 
Besides, I'm sure the God of Wisdom doesn't worry about her reputation among people like us. All right. Well, thanks for the info, Osfond. <laughs> no problem. Always happy to help out the Adventurer's Guild. <sighs> Seems Osfond was right about most people's attitudes here. Not only are they not interested in the Dendro Archon, they even say stuff like, If the Akasha doesn't think I should know, then I don't need to know about it. We've been asking for information non-stop ever since we got to Sumeru. But the harder we try, the more helpless everything seems. Isn't there at least one person in this entire city who cares about Lesser Lord Kusanali? Oh, uh, you two are interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali? Huh? Who are you? From the sound of it, you two are outlanders who recently arrived here. You've been asking around for information on Lesser Lord Kusanali, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Dunyarzad, one of Lesser Lord Kusanali's faithful followers. Uh. Whoa, really? Then do you know how we can meet with her? I'm afraid I can't help you with that. But your conversation earlier did happen to remind me of a legend about the Dendro Archon. Uh, what's our legend? Sure. It goes like this. Long, long ago, there was a man who heard a prophecy. It predicted that a great calamity was about to befall him. Panicked by what he heard, the man sought out the Dendro Archon in hopes that she would bless him with the wisdom to help him escape his predicament. The man journeyed across deserts and through rainforests, and experienced tribulations of every kind. However, he still couldn't find any trace of the Dendro Archon. In despair, he thought, alas, the Archon has abandoned me. He then had no choice but to sorrowfully resign to his fate. Okay, and then what happened? And then, the Calamity came. But to his own surprise, the man felt somehow emboldened by the trials of his journey. By relying on his own strength, he managed to overcome the adversity. At that moment, a bird perched upon his shoulder. This bird was, in fact, an avatar of the Dendro Archon. She said, O oh, Archon Seeker, do you now understand? She and her wisdom have long been found by you. Along your journey, we were in every flower, and blade of grass, every ray of sparkling sun, and every breath of dancing wind. So long as you continue to think and ponder, we'll be wherever you go. What an amazing story. Yeah, I wouldn't go that far. Story. Paimon feels all warm and fuzzy inside after that. <laughs> uh, in a way, it seems like this story is also one of the Dendro Archon's avatars. Dunyarzad, since you worship Lesser Lord Kusanali, can you tell us anything else about her? Of course. So, did you two know that, uh... uh I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but it seems something's come up now. Uh, let's chat another day. Hey, wait! Uh, what the heck just happened? I think I searched the those people over there. It looks like they're searching for someone. Hmm. Zod was acting super nervous just now. You think they're looking for her? Ugh. The stinks! We finally managed to find a lead about Lesser Lord Kusanali! We can't let them get in the way now. <sighs> Let's see if we can get rid of them. Then we can catch up with Dunyarzad. Hey, have you two seen a brown-haired girl wearing a purple top and a long blue dress? We're looking for her. She never changed clothes. Uh, did she have bandages wrapped around her wrists? Yes, that's her. Did you see which direction she went? She did have bandages. Uh... Uh, yeah, she went that way. Quick, after her! <laughs> that 
should keep him busy for a while. Let's hurry and find Junior Zan. You might have been long gone by now. Oh, it's you two. Oh, you startled me there. You can relax now. We threw those people looking for you off the trail. Uh, really? Oh, thank you so oh, much. Unfortunately, I believe there's still more of them out there looking for me. Uh-oh. Looks like there are some coming this way. Huh? More of them? Then what are we standing here for? Run! No, wait, I... Uh... My body isn't in the best shape. Uh, it's difficult for me to run. How about I find some place to hide? Okay, sounds good. There's a tavern on the other side of the port we can go to. They probably wouldn't expect me to hide in a place like that. All right, let's move out. Stay behind us. We'll keep an eye out for anyone looking for you. We still can end the black cats. No, cat's tail. Cat's tail. Oh, we made it. Oh, they shouldn't be able to find us now. Wait, stand down, dear. Hey, she looks like Shinya. <coughs> My lady, who are these two? They're travelers that I met on the street just a moment ago. They happened to notice that you were all searching for me, so they helped me hide. Hmm. I see. In that case, you two should scram. There's nothing here for you. Wait a sec! Who the heck are you? And why are you shooing us away? I'm Miss Dunyarzad's bodyguard, here to see that she returns home safe and sound. <sighs> My lady, let's get going. You've been gone for so long that your parents are worrying themselves sick. And if I refuse to go with you? It'd be easier for the both of us if you cooperated. But if you insist on not going, then I'll have to carry you like a sack of potatoes. She doesn't want to go back. Why are you still pushing her? Stay out of this. You don't understand the situation. Sorry, my lady. Even though I'm your bodyguard, your parents are my employers. I have to answer to them. How much? Wait, what? How much more do I have to pay you to become your employer? So you never listen to my parents ever again. Double? A triple? Give me some time, and I'll get that much. My lady, this isn't about Mora. I don't know what you think of us Eremites, but let me say this. I like Mora, but I'll never go against my principles. That's why I'm here looking for you. Sure, it's an order from my employer, but my conscience was also telling me it's the right thing to do. And knowing your health, carelessly running around like this is gonna hurt ya. For the sake of those who love you, don't be stubborn. No, you're wrong. I'm aware of my limits, and I know what I'm doing. Honestly, the only people being stubborn right now are my parents. And they know perfectly well that it makes no difference if I'm at home or not. They still won't accept reality. And every time I bring this up, they just change the subject. Dia, you've been living with us a long time already. This should be old news to you. <sighs> Dia, I know it hasn't been easy for mother and father, and I'm grateful for everything they've done for me. But there's someone else in this world I'm also grateful to. Because she saved me. 
The love I have for her is the same I have for my parents. This is my life and my last chance. So I want to do something meaningful. My lady, are you sure what you're doing now is meaningful? Yes, I'm sure. At least, it is to me. <sighs> Fine. I won't ask you to return home anymore. But let me make something very clear. I'm only doing this because I respect your determination, not because I agree with you. Thank you, Dia. <sighs> Sorry for being so rude just now. My nerves were acting up, and I even brought up your payment in such an offensive way. Uh, don't worry about it, my lady. I did say that I like Mora. Besides, that's our next topic of conversation. Today's little excursion caused such a ruckus that every single bodyguard at the estate was deployed. It wouldn't be easy to hide things from your old man. Since this definitely won't be your last escapade, here's a little tip. You should at least make it look like your room and things are still in order when you leave. Also, you'll need someone to cover you for when you're out and about. So, I'll let you hire me, my lady. This way, everyone wins. As for the pay, let's say mm, half of what your father pays me. We can settle the bill when we return to the estate. Okay, deal. Yay! Looks like they've reached an understanding! <laughs> Um, are you okay? I'm fine, really. I, I just feel a little tired now that things have calmed down. <sighs> My lady, stop trying to look tough. We're already in a tavern, so let's rest up and grab some grub. I'm sorry for worrying you two. If you don't mind, I'd like for you to join us. Sure! After you rest up, we want to hear more about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Ha! Well, if it isn't Dia, haven't seen you in nearly half a year. Word on the street is that you're a bodyguard for the Homayani family now. Ha! <laughs> Don't you find that kind of work boring? Nah, you get used to it. How about a menu over here? You got it. Huh? Isn't this little Miss Homayani herself? <laughs> we don't get to serve personages like you very often. We'll be sure to prepare our very best. Thank you, sir, but there's no need. I don't have a lot of mora on me, and I really ought to save as much as I can. Uh, but please bring these two the best food you have. They're my new friends, so I want to be a good host for them. Uh, no need to break the bank. We will eat wherever you order. Uh, don't worry about it, we'll pay for all food. Wait, we're paying for ourselves now? Aww, Paimon kind of wanted to try something fancy, but we aren't exactly loaded. Of course we are. Because Paimon will settle it's for something ordinary. Cheap. How about our coconut charcoal cakes? They're our signature snack, and they run cheap. Look! Other customers over there are eating some now. Okay, it doesn't look nice, but then the name sounds both like something good and something bad at the same time. Uh, it's burnt. They look kind of burnt and dry. Uh, Paimon will pass. Thank you, Paimon. That's the first. Hey, come on! Paimon has personal preferences too, you know. Are you going to change to the general? We asked a lot of people when we first arrived, and almost nobody was interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali. So, what made you want to follow her? Well, remember when you asked me if I knew how to meet the Dendro Archon? Even though I don't know how, I think I've actually seen her before. Huh? Really? Yes, it was when I was a child. At the time, my illness had kept me bedridden for the better part of a year. I was stuck inside and couldn't make any friends, and my parents did their best to find treatments for me. But even then, the Akasha didn't have any helpful information. My younger self no longer had any hopes or dreams. 
One flare-up was so bad that I was in a semi-conscious state for several days. Then one night, I woke up alone in my room. I was terrified. My body was paralyzed. Even if I cried, there was no sound. At that moment, an ethereal voice spoke in my mind. Dunyarzad, don't be scared. You don't have to cry. Dunyarzad, don't be scared. You don't have to cry. Mm. <laughs> Who are you? How do you know my name? Um, how do I explain this? You might not be able to understand, but actually, I know everything about you. Really? Of course. I know that you're scared of thunder, that you hate taking medicine every morning, and that you love counting the petals on your mom's skirt. Wow, you really do know everything. Junior is odd. Is there anything you want? What? Not really. I, I can't go anywhere or do anything. Huh? But aren't you a child? All children have wishes. Tell me what you want, and maybe I can make it happen. If she knows everything, shouldn't she know what she wants? Then, uh, can you make my illness go away? Oh. I'm sorry, but I'm not powerful enough to do that right now. Then, can you be my friend? After that, the voice said, Okay, I'll be your friend. Although my body was suffering during those days, that voice encouraged me and told me many wondrous things. Beyond my window was the flourishing Sumeru city. Beyond the city was a lush rainforest. And beyond that was the wall of Samiel. Deserts and all of Tevat. Once I finally made it through that bout of illness, I couldn't hear that voice anymore. I told my mother about it, but she said that I must have been dreaming. But I know that that voice wasn't a figment of my imagination. Before that, I had never heard of Tevat. So you believe the voice you heard was... was Lesser Lord? Yes, for sure. If it weren't for that <laughs> voice, I would have never grown curious about the outside world. Nor would I have learned how to read and enjoy so many books. That voice sparked a desire for wisdom. It had to have been the Dendro Archon. I've been hoping for a chance to repay her kindness. In fact, I was running around today to help prepare the Subzerus Festival for her. What's the Subzerus Festival? Uh, if you are having this part of the quest, we heard about it before. It's Lesser Lord Cusinelli's birthday. Didn't we? Which was the day that she was found by the sages. It's actually an old holiday that originally celebrated Greater Lord Rukadavata's birthday. When she passed away, the holiday eventually became a celebration of the Lesser Lord's birthday. Uh, but it changed dates or it died on its birthday? I heard everyone was overjoyed when they welcomed her back to Sumeru. In those days, the festival was a huge deal. But because of the academia's influence, people have gradually lost interest in the festival. The Academia actively participates in Sumeru's many holidays dedicated to Greater Lord Rukadavata. But when it comes to the Subzeros Festival, forget any funding. They practically act like it doesn't exist. Maybe they see Lesser Lord Kusanali's birth as confirmation of Greater Lord Rukadavata's death. So they're reluctant to celebrate it. Aww, but that's awful! It is. It's absolutely terrible. Sure, the Greater Lord founded Sumeru, but hasn't Lesser Lord Kusanali been the one quietly protecting us for the past few hundred years? I don't know. Has she? <clears throat> Just remember that we're still out in public. <laughs> don't get too carried away now. I know that people over by the Grand Bazaar still hold the sub Festival to this day, but I hadn't met any of them before, so I was never able to contribute. But recently, 
I made a friend there who also follows Lesser Lord Kusanali. I gave her my savings because I want her to throw a wonderful festival this year. That's the least I could do for Lesser Lord Kusanali. Hold on, my lady, does this friend happen to be Nilu, the one who sends flowers to the estate? Yes, that's her. Hmm, I saw her leaving the other day with a nervous look on her face. It seemed like she was hiding something in her arms. Did you give her something? Uh, yes. Uh, initially, I didn't have much Mora prepared, so I had Nilu sell one of my skirts. I've agreed with Nilu to meet up at the Grand Bazaar today, and see how things are coming along. Dia, would you accompany me? Sure, that's quite the trip, though. I'll carry you. No, that would be too much, even for you. You might as well just accept the lift. If I let you walk, who knows how long it'll take us. And if anything happens to you, then I'd really never hear the end of it from your father. Can we also come along? But of course! Nilu will be thrilled to hear there are more people interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali. Oh, let me see. Do you have some recipe? Uh, it doesn't matter. Yes, recipes. Let's grab some. I'll probably use those for some recipes. Uh, and I can make that. Ah, our fruits. Okay, so I'll try to get that. Make some Xbox. It's just tunnel visioning. Sorry I'm late, Nilu. Oh, Dunyarzad. It was taking you so long that I assumed you got trapped at home, but you made it in the end. Uh oh. But if Dia's here, that means you got caught, right? You could say that, uh, but everything worked out. She's on our side now. <laughs> uh, not completely. Oh. And who are these two? Oh, meet the Traveler and Paimon, my two newest friends. They're visitors who just arrived at Sumera City and are looking for information on Lesser Lord Kusanali. So you're followers from another land? Uh, truthfully, no. Oh, really? Well, that's okay. You're still invited to the Sabzeris Festival. By the way, Dunyarzad, We've already started decorating the Grand Bazaar. It looks spectacular, thanks to your generous contribution. You're very welcome. It's the only thing I could do. Do you still have enough Mora? Uh, probably? But don't sweat it. We've already finished renovating the stage. Come on, I'll show you. Not bad. 
The last time I was here, the stairs were full of holes. The stairs were nothing. A little while ago, we discovered that the tree above the stage had a huge chunk of bark ready to fall off. Mr. Zubair was worried sick. We reported it to the Academia many times, but they never sent anyone to deal with it. We didn't want anything bad happening, so we were going to cancel all the stage performances. Why didn't anyone come to handle it? Oh, probably because it was the theater asking. The Academia looks down on performers like us. They probably think it would be best if the theater closed down completely. We can't let that happen, though. Not only would everyone involved in the theater go hungry, but then we wouldn't be able to hold the Subzerus Festival anymore. Well, last time I arrived at a town, and there was a festival about the age. Do they really want to be around? Thank the Ginger Archon for doing your Zod. But the more she gave us, we hired someone to patch up the tree, and we also gave the stage a much-needed makeover. The stage is going to be even prettier when it's festival time. I can't wait for you to see it. And I can't wait to see you on the stage. You've been practicing so long already. It's almost time for your dream to become reality. <laughs> it's our dream. I'll do my best for the two of us. Nilu, what are you going to be doing at the festival? She'll be dancing the dance of Subzerus, the most important performance at the Subzerus festival. Dunyarzad, have you told him the origin of this holiday? I only told them about the Greater Lord and Lesser Lord so far. Okay, then I'll tell you two about how this holiday came to be. According to legend, the Sabzerus Festival was originally the Goddess of Flowers' birthday celebration for the Greater Lord. But is this Goddess of Flower another person? Another god? Or is the Lesser God? No. A long, long time ago, on one of Greater Lord Ruka Devata's oh. birthdays, her friends threw her a celebratory banquet. Some of the gods got drunk. One started playing music, and the Greater Lord started singing. So the goddess of flowers began to dance. As she danced upon the grass, countless beautiful Padisaras began to bloom wherever she stepped. Those brilliant purple flowers became her dazzling stage. All the gods clamored, Oh, if only time could stop at this very moment. It sounds like they had a great time. That sounds somewhat bittersweet. Mm, oh, why bittersweet? Of course they did. When people mention the gods, they always think of the Archon War. But Sumeru's gods also had happy times. Although they aren't around anymore, they're preserved in our tradition of dance. This outfit I'm wearing is apparently based on how the Goddess of Flowers looked. And you dress like that constantly because I think it'll be quite a while before they give you a new skin. Though we're just tiny people compared to the Divine, we still have to do our best to make sure that the birthday girl feels loved on her special day. Nilu, you of all people will definitely be able to convey our well wishes to the Dendro Archon. I also noticed that you went the extra mile and scattered Padisaras around the stage. <laughs> they symbolize the Goddess of Flowers, after all. It's just a shame that all the real Padisaras went extinct after her death. What, the one that just gathered around town isn't real? Yeah. The Greater Lord brought forth Padisaras in memory of the Goddess of Flowers. But she ultimately could never truly replicate that beautiful purple. Mm -hmm. Thinking about the Goddess of Flowers dance makes me wish I could have seen it. If my stage were anything like that, uh, I'd be thrilled if I had just two real Padisaras on the stage. <sighs> so, Traveler in Paimon, what do you think? Interested in the Sabzerus festival? Will you two be coming? Probably. All of Lesser Lord Kusanali's followers will be there for her birthday. It'll be a good opportunity for you to learn more about her. It sounds like a lot of talk. Ooh, Paimon thinks that's a great idea! Uh, you sure it's not because you want to on the phone? You sure it's not because you want to watch Nilo dance? 
this one. Hey, come on! There's nothing wrong with enjoying a festival. Besides, it's Lesser Lord Cusinelli's birthday. She'll be happy to have more people who are celebrating it. <laughs> so how about we all attend the Subzeros <laughs> Festival together? Sounds like a plan. Dunyarzad, let me show you which stage decorations we've picked out so far. Traveler and Paimon, if that doesn't sound interesting to you, then feel free to explore the area. Everyone at the Grand Bazaar loves Lesser Lord Kusanali, and we're all looking forward to the Sabzerus Festival. In that case, we'll take a look around. Uh, you? Huh. Revamping the stage for the festival couldn't have been easy, that's for sure. I bet this year's festival will be one to remember. I don't know much about the Grand Bazaar, but I do know that the residents here have a penchant for song and dance. <laughs> Two things that the Academia doesn't particularly approve of. Oh, and the perfume sold around here is a lot better than what you'll find elsewhere. The fragrances are longer lasting and they're gentler on your skin and... She said perfume, didn't she? But it's written face powder. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> that's uh, what I've heard at least. I wonder if the treasure is going to be used. Whoa! What's with your yellow hair? And why do your clothes look so funny? Are you an outlander? Uh, come on, there are never any blonde people around. There was a girl with red hair here, nobody else has around. Did you know that the Sabzerus Festival is about to happen? There'll be loads of fun things to do at the festival. But the best part is when Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, passes out candy to everyone. Yeah, there are plenty of people from Fontaine with Sooth. Nice. Many people from Fontaine have more hair. Ah, um, dancing at the Subzeru's festival. You know, I also danced when I was younger. As a child, I even asked my grandmother why we performed the dance for the Lesser Lord when it was originally done to honor the Greater Lord. My grandmother said that Greater Lord Rukadavata is a beloved deity and honored by all. And Lesser Lord Kusanali is too. If the Goddess of Flowers ever knew Lesser Lord Kusanali, then she would certainly have wished to be her friend and hold celebrations for her too. The Subzerus Festival has been losing its appeal over the years. Hmm. That is, until a wealthy benefactor stepped in this year and brought the festival back to life. I heard she forked out a lot of mora to make it all happen. Huh? You can't tell. I wonder. Things are really shaping up, and there's a buzz around the festival this year. We're expecting people from all over to come by this year and buy things during the festivities. Don't be fooled into thinking that Sumeru City has the best of everything. Some festival snacks are only offered here in the Grand Bazaar. And when it comes to musicians, dancers, or singers, the Grand Bazaar's got the best of the best. Sure, those folks at the Academia might not like it, but what's a festival without song and dance? Oh, hang on. This area is the bazaar, or like it's an area or some sanctuary. House of Dana, Colossal Library. Uh, Hey, what's that? Who's a cafe? A parallel story, the similar style coffee, but as far as this one gallery. Mm. 
Lulu, your outfit looks amazing. There's also something different about you from when we first met up. <laughs> I thought I'd add a little extra pizzazz to my dress for the festival. See? Wow, did you sew all that yourself? Uh-huh. Sewing is a fundamental skill for everyone in the theater company because we make all our own costumes. Did you know that Mr. Zubair not only can make costumes, but props too? <laughs> I've noticed that you can't keep your eyes off that crown over there. Would you like to try it on? Okay, sure. <laughs> May I? Of course. The legends say that the goddess of flowers had beautiful horns on her head. So this crown was made to reflect that. Oh, what she's wearing. Ah, oh, Junior Zod. You look absolutely oh. stunning with it on. It's like I'm looking at the goddess of flowers herself. Hey! Is that who Paimon thinks it is? It looks <laughs> like... Catherine! She can walk. Is she allowed to leave? Adventurer's Guild doesn't require any complicated functions. But saying and doing the same old things over and over again can get pretty monotonous. Like watching the same Fontaine movie day after day. Mm, you know, the Catherines have a colorful mind as well, don't they? One knows what the other knows. Take you two, for example. You travel across to Vat to enrich your lives and gain new experiences. <coughs> well, we enjoy traveling across to Vat and all that, but we're mainly looking for clues about his sister. Yes, you should keep searching. Sometimes the answers we're looking for aren't necessarily at our intended destination. Instead, they're found along the way. Huh. Heard someone say something pretty similar recently? Uh, anyways, what brings you out here, Catherine? Are you also a fan of this sub service festival? No, not particularly. I guess you could say that I'm loving the recent atmosphere here. If festivals bring happiness to everyone, then that's where their true value lies. Oh. It looks like it's about time for me to be heading back now. Alright, we'll see you next time at the Adventures Guild. Oh, by the way, thanks for connecting us with the Aramites. We've already made some great friends in Sumeru City thanks to you. That's a nice close on her keyhole on her neck. I'm sure you two will get along well with the people here. You've already been blessed by the element of Dendro after all. <laughs> See you around. I could have avoided. Hmm. There's something really different about Catherine today. Yeah, I felt wrong. Hey, traveler. Paimon. Oh, hey, dear. What's going on? I've got something to tell you. My lady knows you're looking for ways to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali, and she's been trying to come up with a way to help you. Well, I have an idea that might help. Are you serious? We'd love that! It might not necessarily pan out, so don't get your hopes up too much. I'll need to take you two somewhere and ask someone some questions. What about 
Tony Arzard. Uh, my lady is feeling a little worn out at the moment. Nilu's found a place for her to rest. After I take my lady home, let's meet in front of the Citadel of Regzar. Sounds like a plan! Let's head over to the Citadel of Regzar and wait for Dia! Uh, this is his sight. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. It took some convincing for the master and mistress to believe that Miss Dunyarzad was only sitting in the port for a while because she was in a bad mood. Anyway, I guess I should be thanking you. I haven't seen Miss Dunyarzad that happy in a long time. If it wasn't for you two, she probably would have been caught and dragged back much earlier. You sure sound a whole lot nicer than when we first met, Dia. Who would have thought you had such a soft spot for Dunyarzad? It's called being a professional. I'm a bodyguard, and I work for whoever's paying. <laughs> Look, Dia's blushing. Yeah, it's a blush if I ever see one. Uh, listen, you two. I don't expect to be working for Miss Dunyarzad very long, but I hope to finish things on a positive note if possible. Let's cut the chit chat and head into the Citadel. We'll see if the person I know has a way for you two to meet with the Lesser Lord. I haven't been here already. Oh, hey, Chief. Ha, <laughs> Dia! What are you doing here? And well, well. Didn't expect to see you three together. <laughs> I take it you all know each other already? Mm hmm. We met this morning after the Adventurers Guild pointed us to Osfan for more info. No kidding. Huh. So, where's Ruksha? I thought I'd help these two out by asking about the theft. Anything you can tell him? Rukshaw's gone over to the Academia. The Grand Sage recently ordered Sumero City to begin bolstering its defenses, so people from all over have been called back to the city. <clears throat> Since you've already mentioned the theft, I suppose I might as well tell him what we know. Appreciate it, Chief. Uh, theft? Sorry, what the heck are you guys talking about? Just recently, the Academia lost something, and there's a chance the item is connected with the Dendro Archon. This case might just somehow help you in meeting her. Huh. I suppose that's one way to look at it. But if you ask me, the case is more about the Academia than anything else. Let me fill you in. The Academia recently sent a convoy to pick up an important package from Aru Village. Word got out, and the convoy was robbed on its way back. The Grand Sage took the whole matter very seriously. Not only did he dispatch the Matra, but also enlisted our help in the search for leads. All we know so far is that whatever was stolen is currently in Port Ormos. You two have heard of Port Ormos, haven't you? It's the largest commercial port in all of Sumeru. You can travel there by leaving Sumeru City and heading south along the river. The Academia's grip isn't long enough to reach all the way to Port Ormos, so the city's a little more laid back, meaning the population's also a mixed bag. You never know who you'll meet there. Hmm. Apparently what was lost has a great deal to do with the Akasha, knowledge, and even the gods. I'm afraid I don't have any other details for you, though. If you're interested, Maybe you could head to Port Ormos and ask around yourselves. If you want my advice, try introducing yourselves as students of the Academia once you're there. Uh, should we be knowledgeable in some area too, as a student? Are you serious, Chief? All the Academia students are in Sumeru <laughs> City, you know. Why should they pretend to be students in Port Ormos? <laughs> if you're also interested. 
Just go there and see what happens. Count me out. I've got plenty of work to do here for the Homayani family. And take it from me. If you two really do decide to visit Port Ormos, you'd best watch your backs. Let's just say that the Eremites there aren't nearly as friendly as those here in Sumeru City. There are even some extremists who go around shouting slogans like, Retake Sumeru for the Scarlet King! Word is that more and more are joining their movement. They're becoming a real headache for Chief and the others. It's quite possible we'll get some event and maybe a new area. No, maybe when they unlock the desert, something like Enkanomiya, then we'll face the memory of the Scarlet King or something. You bet they are. The Scarlet King's been dead for thousands of years. Now they start spreading rumors of his return. Oh, Ridiculous. So thousands of years, so that's way longer than the Arkham War. Not everyone's like you, Chief. Even the desert natives who abandon their homes in the wilderness still wish to have a god of their own. <sighs> well, Traveler, that's about all the information we have for you. Thanks, Dia! And you too, Osfond! Since we've gathered all we could for the moment in Sumeru City, let's head to Port Ormos and see what we can find next! Miss Dunyarzad is looking forward to seeing you both at the Subzerus Festival, so be sure to get yourselves back here in time for that. Yeah, nobody told me when that's going to happen, but we won't forget. Good. Then we'll see you both at the Subzerus Festival. Problem. <laughs> you two must really be something if you've got Dia the Flame Mane speaking on your behalf. The Corps of Thirty isn't officially overseen by the Academia, but because we're hired mercs, there's still lots of sensitive intel that I can't reveal to you. In the end, when it comes down to it, the city's safety is both the Corps and Academia's top priority. I've told you all I can about what was stolen from the Academia. As for why you should pretend to be students in Port Ormos, I'll leave that for you to find out yourself. When I hand this to the <sighs> it's been a while since I visited the Citadel of Regzar. I'll catch up with Chief for a bit before I head back myself. He really did a lot for me in the past. Remember, to get to Port Ormos, just follow the river south from Sumeru City's port. Just be sure to take care of yourselves out there. We'll meet again at the Subzerus Festival. <laughs> Can I get a boat? Oh, come on, why, why there? Why not place one here, next to the port? Okay, let's grab uh, a boat and follow the river. There, I had to. Oh, if they go. Happy to oblige. Take that! Chance! Get moving! I'll jump. Wind Strider. Need. Yeah, Vintation wasn't really... Oh, they turned so strange. Who says there aren't benefits to...
Oh, oh, okay. The village. Uh, is that part of the quest that I left? Whoa, where, bitch? Uh, I can grab them during the day, but they aren't open. Should I go? I think there's at least a third of the mission to go. Come and have a good look yourself. Traditional spices of the highest quality, made with pride and experience. <laughs> You've got a deal. I can't thank you enough for always looking after my business. Believe me, I'm not making this up. Several Eremite mercenary groups are nearly in open conflict, but does the core of 30 care? And that's not all. Did you know that? Wow! Talk about hurly burly! This place is busy! Huh? Guess that's only to be expected for the largest port in Sumeru. Uh, maybe it's because of what Dia told us earlier, but Baiman can't seem to shake the feeling that there's also danger lurking in these crowds. Ooh. Let's get our bearings so we can start looking for leads. We know that whatever the Academia lost is related to the gods. But other than that, we don't have much else to go on. Hmm. Osvan told us to try posing as Academia students while asking around. Paimon checked the Akasha on the way here, and the Academia doesn't seem to have any research facilities in poor Ormos. Paimon doesn't get it. Won't we look even more suspicious going around saying we're academia students and asking about the stolen item? Alright, we should figure that out before doing anything else. Figure that out could be crucial for the rest of our investigation here. Well, given all the people that come through here every day, if there's any information to be found, Paimon bets we could find it in the market. Let's ask around and see what we come up with. Oh, 
Welcome. Welcome. Uh, how can I help you two? Ah, uh, hi there. We would like to ask you a question. Um, do students from the academia ever come to Port Ormos? <laughs> of course. Especially around this time of year. Students from Sumeru City that are about to graduate often come to Port Ormos to cut loose a little. Many people often talk about how hard it is to get accepted into the academia, let alone graduate. But those who finish their studies and go on to become full-time researchers at the academia have it even harder. Sure, we may not be Sumero City, but Port Ormos offers beautiful scenery and a stress-free environment. Some even say it's good luck to come to Port Ormos, so students and researchers come flocking here when things get to be too much at the academia. Ah, you see over there? Those are students from the academia. They look pretty serious. They've been looking worried and miserable ever since they got here a few days ago. If you ask me, the life of a merchant is better. So long as the Akasha teaches us what we need, then life is good. Hmm. Those students seem to be discussing something. Let's see if we can listen in. Ha! Keep up. Ha! Oh. It's no good. I've tried asking around, but I haven't been able to learn anything useful. Not to mention that a bunch of scary-looking Aramite mercenaries have been posted along the streets now. There's been a lot of fighting between the different Aramite factions in Port Ormos. If we choose to move on our own, then it would be wise to steer clear of them. Especially the group that's constantly shouting some stuff about the Scarlet King and some resurrection. I've even heard that the Citadel of Regzar is starting to get fed up with them. What was that group called again? Ein something or other? They're called Ein El Achmar. Today, I heard that the thing we're after might be in their possession at the moment. Wait, come again? Don't you see? Many of the Aramites in Port Ormos deal with trading this kind of thing. They're usually pretty wary of outsiders, but not so with students of the academia. It's because the kind of goods that students are looking for aren't the kind of goods that Aramites are after. As long as they know you're a student, then deals can be made. I've heard that Ein el Hakmar likes to set up shop at the Jafar Tavern. Supposedly, if you're willing to part with half a million Mora, they'll give you info on anything. Wait, wait, did you say half a million? If information alone costs that much, then how could we ever afford to buy what we're looking for? <sighs> I guess we might as well give up on trying to graduate this way. I wouldn't worry too much. Our field of research is very niche. Who else could possibly be after that kind of shady knowledge? I bet it's practically worthless to anyone aside from us. Well, I guess that makes sense. Then the only thing left for us now is to find a way in. Why don't we all just pool our money together and pay for the information? Whoa! Did you hear that? A niche field of research and shady knowledge? It all sounds pretty suspicious to Paimon. Is knowledge something people just buy and sell like that? They are suspicious indeed. Whatever was stolen from the academia is also related to knowledge. So, what's your plan? <coughs> Let's go to Jafar Tavern. Let's try talk to one of the airlines. Wait, didn't you hear what they just said? Oh. Buying information is going to cost us half a million mora. Have you lost your mind? Reliable information is worth the price. I'll let that off easy if it turns out to be a scam. Oh, alright. Paimon never thought she'd agree to parting with that kind of mora. But if you know what you're doing, then we should give it a shot. Come on, we, we burn millions of mora on a daily basis to upgrade equipment. Half a million? Do you really think that Ein El Akmar group can give us reliable info about what we're after? We should discuss things thoroughly before we make any moves.
uh, for such an important and big place, shouldn't it be kind of paved? Despite the size, it makes it look like a small village. Ah, like that. This is the place we heard those students talking about. Let's find a seat somewhere and see if we can spot the group they mentioned. <laughs> oh, you've arrived. Please take a seat. So, they think that they can go toe to toe with the boss? Ha! <laughs> Once we reclaim the power of the Scarlet King, they'll be the first that the boss punishes. <laughs> They're nothing to be afraid of. Our main rival now is the Caracal Battalion. They've also amassed a significant amount of more this time, so we mustn't underestimate them. How can the Caracal Battalion compete with the boss when they're nothing but a bunch of money-grubbing opportunists out for a quick mora? Yeah, with boss's fervent devotion, He'll be able to use this power to bring our god back this time. Huh. All these guys talk about is the Scarlet King. So they're probably the ones we're looking for. <laughs> Greater Lord Ruka Devata. That traitor and her followers must not be spared. The day will come when the Scarlet King exacts vengeance on Sumeru. And all of them shall be punished. Okay, so I'll probably face it. Uh, Great Lord, it's a traitor. Yeah, Paimon was wondering what they meant, too. We should ask about that if we get the chance later. What you see is what we got. Feel free to look around. Should I adjust huh? Who are you? What do you want? Uh, a student for the academia. A student? <laughs> What's a student from Sumeru City doing in Port Ormos? Well, uh, is it quite famous, they said. Looking for info about certain stealth. Things. Ah, well, if it's info you want, you've come to the right place. The question is, can you afford it? Uh, maybe 50 more. Huh? What is this? Some kind of joke? Oh! <laughs> Sorry! He must have grabbed the wrong amount! Hey, what do you think you're doing? Uh, so, if I said traveler, you would. Oh, make rice. <laughs> Here, this is the merchant's address. Whatever you're looking for, you'll find it there. Hmm? Well, what are you waiting for? Uh, I just have one more question. Oh, that's right! We heard you mention the Scarlet King just now. We're actually interested to know more because... Uh... Because... We're... Archaeology students! <laughs> Fine. Since you've already handed over the Mora, I guess I can throw in a little extra info. As you can see, members of Ain al Ahmar are devout believers of the Scarlet King. Years ago, the Scarlet King founded the great desert nation that was our homeland. It was an advanced civilization, far oh. beyond anything you'll see in present-day Sumeru. Wasn't the desert made during the war between the... Didn't they say that? Uh, if it was so advanced, maybe this deck was Akshaka, Akasha, Akasha, was stolen from it. The Scarlet King was the rightful god of wisdom, but mm. he was betrayed by a companion he trusted. She even stripped him of his title, God of Wisdom. Mm. So, you mean the traitor was... Greater Lord Ruka Devata, yes. That shameless wretch destroyed the Scarlet King's civilization, and our ancestors were forced to flee to this land where we were made to suffer the tyranny of our enemies. Why can't you just go back to the desert if you want? Furthermore, she conspired with the Academia to cover up the truth of her actions and create the merciful and benevolent facade for which she is now known. Ugh, just thinking about it sickens me. And how do you know the truth? <sighs> But the story doesn't end there, oh no. The Scarlet King isn't truly dead. The voice of the Oracle has been heard in the desert, prophesying his resurrection. Mm. 
Mark my words, our god shall return. And when that day comes, all followers of the traitor and all the desert dwellers who have forgotten their true god will suffer retribution together. So that'll probably be the great catastrophe that will happen while I'm Sumeru. If what I'm saying makes you shiver with fear, it might not be too late for you to become a believer of the Scarlet King. <laughs> Uh, can tell us more about the Oracle. I don't have anything to say to you academia people about that. I think this conversation has reached its end. Not just yet. This man is a fraud. Oh, another guy with a vision. Huh? <sighs> you again? T deranged academia lunatic. Yes, it's me again. I already warned you that if you weren't willing to sit and discuss things with me, I'd take measures to make things uncomfortable for you. Listen to me. That address he gave you is fake. Or at least, you won't find a merchant waiting for you there. This group has been boasting all around that they can provide information on a certain item as a means of luring people into their territory. So I can go there and beat them? How are them? Once you show up, they keep up the act until they have hard evidence that you want to purchase said item. Then they use that to squeeze you for all the more you're worth. Hey! Shut it all, Haytham! What are you playing at trying to ruin our business like this, hmm? I told you the other day. I wish to discuss my terms with your boss. Ha! The boss made it perfectly clear that he won't negotiate with you. Yes, and in no uncertain terms. But that was then. It does not preclude him from changing his mind in the future. I'm warning you, don't push us, or this could get ugly. We don't usually get rough with people from the academia because it just complicates things. For a lunatic like you, though, we might just have to make an exception. If you're suggesting that we escalate this from a verbal exchange to a physical one, I accept. After all, even the Archons used war to negotiate the ownership of Tavat. If, on the other hand, we can't agree on any means of negotiation at all, then I'm afraid my next course of action will sting a little more than the mere falling through of a few business deals. I will jeopardize the Eremite's reputation, which I know you value above all else. I am quite confident that if I began to take such action, your boss would willingly approach me himself. However, I fear that by then, some things will have happened that cannot be undone. Also, a word of advice. I suggest you tell your boss exactly what happened here today. Otherwise, he might blame you for not telling him in the future. What did you say? Consider this. Have I ever failed to follow through on my word in the past? This guy is really out of his mind. Okay, then. If you really have a death wish, let's meet a week from today. The pier in front of the Pharos Lighthouse, four o'clock in the afternoon, sharp. Don't expect us to hold back. Seriously? You are setting the fight for a week from now? Should it be later today or tomorrow? Not so fast. First, you return the 500,000 more to them. Did he just drop that on the floor? Please, I beg you, don't provoke them. We can't afford any trouble with this crowd. They haven't even paid for their food yet. Ah, Mr. Iman. There appears to be fewer staff in the restaurant recently. This wouldn't happen to be because they're all busy spreading the word to the students, would it? I, uh... Well... <laughs> Someone who chooses to do business with a group like that really can't afford to get so flustered the instant someone confronts them about it. Consider the meal compensation for our silence. I'd say you're getting an excellent deal. Whoa, did you see that? He not only got us our Mora back, but sent the Emirates running too! Yeah, he's kinda like a Diluc. Plus, he seems to know a lot about what's going on around here. Let's catch up with him and ask some questions! Please, just leave. Forget the cost of the meal. Just, uh, pretend nothing happened today. 
I didn't eat anything. What do you want? Thanks for help back there. No need for thanks. My goal was to get to them, and you two gave me just the opportunity I needed. We're even. Oh, I advise you to keep your distance from them. Since they weren't able to make off with your mora in the end, they might harass you again in the future. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. Hold your horses! We still have something to ask you about! I didn't even notice he was dangerous as well. Since you tore through their scam right in front of them, you must know the real story about a... Ahem... <clears throat> certain something, no? Who exactly are you two? And why are you inquiring about that? I'm a student from the academia. A student. <laughs> right. Look, you should know that those thugs conducting business with you had nothing to do with your lie. Uh, perhaps can I stop terms? Huh? Oh, yeah! He's really strong! Weren't you saying something about a physical exchange? We can help with that. He doesn't even have a vision. Forget it. Maybe not, but he can still use elemental energy. Otherwise, there's no way we'd go asking for info from I'm... I'll... I... Um... From guys like that! People are always saying different names from different languages like it's no big deal and when and sometimes she gets troubled those high-headed thugs are definitely gonna bring a lot of backup for your next meeting even if you don't go alone you won't regret taking us with you hmm. uh... <sighs> all right i accept got a pen and paper if you're searching for someone who sells that kind of merchandise, I'll give you one of their addresses, and you can try your luck. We'll reconvene at the appointed time by the pier. It doesn't matter if you show up or not. Um, so, since you were happy to give us this merchant's information, does that mean you can tell us exactly what we're after? You were willing to part with 500,000 mora for something and you didn't even know what it was? I got the money. <laughs> Okay. Well, if you truly are as skilled as you claim, then you can beat the answer out of them when they become hostile. Look, if you've been making inquiries, then you have to know something by now. Tell me what you know so far, so I don't waste time repeating information. We know it's connected to the academia somehow, and that not only do the Aramites deal in it, but some students want to get a hold of it too. Hmm, what else? It seems like some kind of knowledge. You know almost everything there is to know, but you're unable to compile this information because you've never seen the object before. This is what you've been looking for. Uh, so... Huh? Paimon yeah, can't it's... tell what it is. It looks like some kind of ornament. This is a knowledge capsule. To put it simply, it's a vessel that can store a fixed quantity of canned knowledge. It's like a miniature Akasha. Yeah, it's a hard drive. Anyone who links it to their personal Akasha terminal instantly becomes privy to its contents. Anyone. Correct. Anyone. Unlike the Akasha, which heavily regulates who can access what information, knowledge capsules can further contents without any requisites. Hmm... Yeah, the lore about control information, about being in Azuma, being secluded from everything. I think they're trying to say something about China. That's amazing! It's essentially a convenient and harmless vestibule for knowledge. Unfortunately, it's illegal in Sumeru to privately possess or trade them. Uh, illegal in Sumeru, but isn't that some technology that only exists in Sumeru and 
Wouldn't it be a matter of what is the star inside of that? They were created as a means for scholars to transfer knowledge gained from Ermansoul into the Akasha mm. and are intended to be destroyed immediately after use. Mm. But despite strict regulations, some of these knowledge capsules will always escape destruction. After all, there will always be those in this world who are dissatisfied with life as designed for them by the Akasha and wish to change their fate. Over the past century, a wide variety of canned knowledge has been leaked from the academia. Now, in Port Ormos, the valuable ones are a means to Mora for the Aramites. Mm. Meanwhile, those which the Aramites deem to be useless to them occasionally prove useful to the common citizens and hapless academia students. Mm. Well, I think that about sums it up. I heard that the academia lost something recently. Oh, so that's your true objective. I want to learn more about it. With our current arrangement, I don't believe I can offer an answer. Well, perhaps can negotiate further? <sighs> You're still resolved. <laughs> Fine. Let's talk somewhere with fewer people. Keep up! Hmm. Should I adjust the shipping schedule? Uh, maybe I didn't have to go around this way. Welcome. Let's continue our conversation here. If you wish to learn more about the knowledge capsule that the Academia lost, then you must help me with something. What is it? I need you to find someone named Dory, a traveling merchant. Unlike the peddlers who hawk inferior knowledge capsules, she often has quality goods in stock. Some say that as long as there is profit to be made, there is nothing she won't dare to sell. She's guarded against people from the Academia because most of her wares don't comply with Academia regulations. I think she blacklisted me. I met with her informant, but it soon became clear that they had no intention of letting me get any further. Become one of Dory's customers and earn her trust. This is my condition for further collaboration. Why do you want us to meet with her? Until you complete this task, you don't have question privileges. <sighs> Fine. So how do we go about doing this? You two are outlanders who haven't been here for long, so Dory should view you as safe clients. I'll give you the informant's address and their contact password. Hmm. Beyond the password, though, I have no way of knowing what other tricks she might have up her sleeve. You'll have to improvise. Uh, this is kind of nerve-wracking. The true challenge begins after you meet her. She has a keen nose for Mora and a shrewd eye for wares, and she only likes customers who she deems to have good taste. I'll prepare some funds for you. Buy her highest quality Ooh. wares and earn her approval. That's true. Have you two heard of Elemental Sight? I can't use it. Oh, that's a surprise. I guess I'll have to hold you in higher regard. Anyway, that ability should resolve your issue. Here are two knowledge capsules. Tell me, can you detect any difference in their quality? Paimon used elemental sight. Try inspecting them with elemental <coughs> sight. Mm. How'd it go? Did you see anything? Yeah, one well, is radioactive. They both go green, one well, on the left shines brighter. Rumor has it that higher quality knowledge capsules generally appear brighter when viewed through elemental sight. Uh, how do you know what's higher quality? Well, information may be more useful to one person than to other. That's because knowledge originates from Ermansoul, the root of Dendro power itself. The more powerful the knowledge, the richer it is in Dendro energy. 
However, some can knowledge with a high concentration of elemental energy is of little use in contemporary times, so those capsules are of little value. Using elemental sight is merely a stopgap measure, but it should suffice for earning Dory's trust. That sounds pretty impressive. Here's a sheet with the informant's location and contact password, and here is the mora for purchasing canned knowledge. Don't be cheap. You'll need to spend to catch Dory's eye. If there's any mora left over, just keep it. Oh. Oh, and be sure to exercise some caution. There have been Matra present in Port Ormos lately. Your efforts will be for naught if they catch you. Matra? Hmm. <sighs> They belong to the Academia's regulatory body. They also handle cases of illegal canned knowledge transactions. Like I said, the Academia has banned both their trade and possession. So you shouldn't have those. The Matra are razor sharp. You're in for nothing good if they lock their sights onto you. If you two want to back out, now's the time. I don't really think there is. Okay, then we have a deal. It's part of if the you succeed sword. in your I dealings with you. Dory, Come find me at the Wikela Funduk. We'll have an open discussion then. Looking at what Alhatham wrote, Dory's informant is a traitor near Old Ormos. Let's follow the... Uh, didn't he give me another address before? No, true person is already carving a part or almost good. This just yeah, we were talking around here before. Didn't he gave me an address of something and then we push him further and had this continuation of talk? Hello, what are you two looking to buy? <coughs> oh, I should have read that thing. We want to buy some raw heart. We want to buy some. Yeah, I don't think so. doesn't think it was that on the paper. Well, why don't you buy some unripe horror fruit? <laughs> what a unique palette. We have unripe horror fruits, but we usually keep them in the back. I'll have someone escort you. Following the paper got us past the first round. Yeah, I didn't read the paper. Ronak, these two want to buy unripe horror fruits. Show them to the warehouse. Got it. You too. Please follow me. You two have a fascinating fashion sense. We haven't seen a customer wearing a Sumeru rose for quite some time. Okay. Uh, hold on. Let me think. Sumeru rose <laughs> means. Okay. What was that? Uh, I called that. Let's use that, 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 and that. Uh, this is to learn this blueprint, okay. Uh, 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 no, it's... Call this letter, no, that was something else. It doesn't tell me how big I have. Uh, read. Look to buy unripe hard fruits, as the information should take you to Dory. Uh, wear a morning flower. Looking to buy canned knowledge. Whereas to wear rose, looking to buy products legally available on the market. So why would I use the code before? Mouse, customer, rich Poland tiger, mantra. Uh, taken by mice, so customer. Taken by rich, rich Poland tiger, confiscated by the mantra. Pack in summer city style to purchase small mouse. Packing port almost time to purchase the book. Compliment a customer of skill. Corresponds to her fruit that causes dizziness and ringing in the ears. Compliment a customer of erudition. Corresponds to her fruit that causes a heart stroke. Mistake. I do apologize. Whew. That 
Pop quiz sure was scary. Ah, the warehouse is up ahead. Please follow me. Uh, how should new customers learn about that? Oh, evil. What? Let me read. Quest location involving in other quests. Please check details. What quests? Uh, the precious carving. Uh. So, I have to uh, learn that some package uh, may have something to do with gods, you and Paimon immediately set out to for for almost. For a note, you guys may are saying over any carving in the open market of Port Almos. <laughs> Okay, I guess I'll stop playing here. The next time I play, I'll, I'll have to do this quest. Yeah. You know, be careful not to enter this area so I don't start this quest by X nature or something. Uh, it's this quest. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, I'll get a new exquisite camera. Come on, pauses with Siri. What does it do? I already have a camera that makes photos really colored. <coughs> yeah, but I wait here. And uh, next week I'll continue with Genshin. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. It's all part of the learning process. <laughs> <laughs>